Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Fogo video being very quiet because they've announced the Cozy Up for Winter campaign, aka the download celebration with a bookie that everyone was waiting for and was wondering, where is it? Well, we know where it is now, so I'm going to look over the campaign and then talk about the banner itself, and that's going to be today's video, so let's go into it. Uh, first things first, we have to take notice it is now called the Cozy Up for Winter campaign and no longer a download celebration. Um... Uh, it shouldn't be anything to worry about, to be honest. I think it's probably pretty smart. Uh, they probably realize trying to go... So these always have to happen. We can, we are eventually going to hit the, down, the next download milestone. But it probably just makes more sense to just change what they're called. Because these always have to happen in... It's weird, because we have to follow JP to the exact amount. And it's silly to be like, oh yeah, downloads, we are making them, but we're also not as big as JP, so our numbers aren't big, so whatever. It's fine. I think Cozy Up for Winter Campaign is a perfectly good name. And as long as we get everything, it's perfectly fine. Like I've said in the past, NA is entirely funded by the fact that JP makes so much money that they can actually just fund NA. And it's not an issue, really, because JP just makes so much money. But anyway... The Cozy Up for Winter campaign. Here's the main difference. We have Ibuki in the sweater as a pair to Ibuki in the regular outfit. So they made sure to uh, make it fit with a the theme, which is this is a very good outlook, a uh, very good outfit for her. So very good idea on their part. Uh, the campaign starts from the 7th and it goes into the 14th. So if you are going for as trying to get as much F FP as possible to uh, get a bunch of craft essence exp for the times two that's coming up you got limited time before that event ends itself so the cozy up for winter camp if you're wondering what the hell i'm talking about it's because yeah let me go here the on um, the na side this ends the eighth and then this starts on the seventh and the t it has times two craft essence exp chance which is a chance of the great and um good suck to show up and there's plenty of chances in the free to play free to play banner to get a lot of exp cards so a lot of people were waiting for them to overlap so they could just do both at the same time and now you basically have like a full day of doing that so it's actually it's uh if you're planning on doing that to level up a bunch of craft essences good luck you're about to have a crazy 24 hours so let's get back into it. Um, so yes, the part one. This should be almost exactly the same, by the way. But I am going to use this one just in case. Oop. Careful. If I'm, not, if I'm not careful enough. Should be exactly the same. Yeah, 24 million. A uh, special login bonus for seven consecutive days. You'll get 10 million QP, Silver Fruit, Hellfire of Wisdom, 5 Star SSR, EXP, the 10 Golden Fruits, uh, Hero Crystal fo Star Foe of the HP variety and of the Attack variety times 10, and then on the final login, 10 Summon Tickets, work worth up to 11 St. Quartz Summons. In addition, a login for 5 days, once per day, during the period below, will also receive Mana Prisms of 200. The Hero Crystal Meteor Foe Owl, which is the HP and the attack. It's the Golden Foes, both one for attack and one for uh, HP. A Rare Prism and a Crystallized Lore. And this period is from the 7th until the 24th. So it goes beyond the campaign that we have right here. Anyway, the eligibility, clear, clear Fuyuki. <laughs> That's basically it. And here you go if you want a visual of them. Easy enough. Part 2. Cozy up for Winter Campaign 2023 commemorative rewards added to Daily Missions Limited. During the period below, additional rewards will be added to Daily Missions within the Master Mission. For a limited time, clear all missions to receive uh, 240 Mana Prisms, a Rare Mana Prisms, and a Beast Footprint times 2. Uh, and here's how it looks like. Complete all Daily Missions, some do, do, do 60, 60, 1 Mana Prisms, a Beast Footprint, Mana Prisms, Mana Prisms, Beast Footprint, easy. These missions are separate from the Daily Master Missions that are updated every day. If you do not claim the rewards by the end of the rewards claimable period listed above, they will no longer be available. Please note it will not be possible to complete Cozy Up for the Winter Campaign 2023 missions after the mission period has ended. And you can see the period here is the 8th until the 9th. It's literally a, a day, so you have a day. Makes sense. Uh, five command codes added to the Da Vinci Workshop. To celebrate the release of the Cozy Up for Winter Campaign 2023, the following command codes have been permanently uh, 
have been added permanently to the Exchange Mana Prism and the Exchange Rare Mana Prism shop. Uh, you can still claim the command codes from both Exchange Mana Prism and Exchange Rare Mana Prism even if you already own a copy of the command codes, meaning you'll just get two copies. Demetic Beast of the Forest, the Dark Disciples Command Seal, and the Love Hunter. There you go, those for 300 Mana Prisms each. And then for the, the higher ones, which are the SR ones, it's the Mirror of the Eight Leaves and the Sword of the Beginning and the End. And there you go, both of those cost two rare mana prisms. Part four of the celebration, cozy up winter campaign. Uh, to celebrate the release, you'll be, <laughs> the following three command code items will be added to the exchange of mana prisms for half their usual cost. So there you go, if you want a quick code opener, an arts code opener, or a buster code, you can get it for 50 as opposed to 100. Um, and only one. Part five, the suck is here. Chance of super and great suck for servants and craft essences enhancement limited time. So if you've been holding on to your CE bombs or you're been, or you're just someone holding on to CE EXP stuff, this is your chance to get to level 100 and get the find and complete that mission. It's your best chance, honestly. Um, this applies also for servants, but also. Um, Wait, the chance of super suck, double EXP acquired, and great suck, triple EXP acquired. Wait a minute. The chance for super suck and great suck. Okay. I, I think I maybe in my head I've assumed <laughs> that super was also always better than great, but I think it might just be because it has super suck on it, and I've just been saying it, but I'm pretty sure it's always been great suck. I don't know if I just had a weird brain fart moment <laughs> where I realized I've never actually known which one was better. <laughs> it's fine. Um, uh, the bonus to EXP earned from Super and Great Suck when performing for Craft Essence Enhancement does not apply to Account EXP Accumulated EXP. Okay. And then part six, the Emperor Gathering and Training Grounds are all coming back for a limited time. There you go, they're going to be all open. I don't need to tell you about that. Uh, part 7, one half QP cost for Servant and Craft Essence Enhancements, limited time. QP necessary for Servant and Craft Essence Enhancement will be halved for a limited time. This is a great time to get your skill on or your Craft Essence Enhancement on, because it is expensive for both. Especially if you're CE bombing a whole bunch, it does rack up pretty quickly. New item added to the Exchange Rare Man Mana Prisms to the Da Vinci Shop, uh, Grand Cavallo. Has been added up to it where you can exchange a thousand. Uh, wait, which one is this one? Yes, you can exchange one rare mana prism so that you can get the chance to buy five grand cavallos, which are um, a thousand mana prisms each. This is always the weird, this has always been very weird to me, but whatever. The idea that you have to pay a mana prism <laughs> to get the chance to pay more random mana prisms. If you have previously exchanged for one through copies, uh, one through four copies of the five star uh, Grand Cavallo, only the remaining copies will be unlocked for exchange, meaning that if you have two and you use a Romantic Prism, you will unlock three basically. And that's it. And this is the banner itself, which is these are the units that are going to be on it. Uh, let's go over to the other side to talk more about the units themselves. So the video is going on long enough. We got Suna, aka the Persona 4 protagonist. Um, I think he's good. I've heard a lot of people saying he's. I feel like I say this about Suna all the time. I really should look up a little bit more about what what Suna does, because <laughs> I think I've just been blanket saying he's good. But I'm I'm just trusting that the people who have Suna and love Suna are not lying to me. <laughs> when they say Suna is good. And I'm pretty sure I looked at it once and said, yeah, this is a pretty solid unit. So there you go. If you want Suna, here's your chance for Suna. Next, let's talk about Kintoki. Kintoki is a berserker. He has, um, he's a straight up gorilla. He is, there's nothing really more to say than he's gorilla. He has one quick, one arts, three buster, full gorilla kit. Uh, his first skill is Monstrous Strength. He increases his attack for, by 50% for a single turn. He has a Animal Dialogue C, which charges his MP gauge by 50%. And then he has the Natural Body A. He has not received a buff once to any of his skills since he released. Um, increases his own Offensive Debuff Resistance for 3 turns. The Offensive Debuff Resistance are these, anything that would make you deal less damage. 
It then recovers on HP. Uh, it's 120% debuff resistance and the heal is 3000 and the cooldown is a 5 on third skill. The second skill is a cooldown of 6 and the uh, first one is 5. He has two passive skills, Madness Enhancement E, Divinity D. His third pin skill is an anti-assassin critical attack chance resistance just so you can really stick at the shooting. Um, in the way that sh he would want it, which is through violence. And then finally, his Noble Phantasm is the Golden Spark, the Golden Shock. A rank C buster anti-unit hits once, steals damage that ignores defensive uh, buffs to an enemy, to one enemy, and then reduces their buster resistance by 30% for two turns. The damage is 800% and the damage is 800% uh, at level one, it's 12,000 at level five. He has a chance to stun them for a single turn. The charge at the stun chance at level one is 50%, and the final level, if you get it all the way to overcharge five, it's a 100% chance to stun. He has a special outfit, which you get from completing High in Kyo, which is a very cool outfit. It's a pretty sick outfit. I th in general, I've always liked Kintoki, and I think he's cool. He's a golden man. He's a well loved warrior. What's not to love about that? Dudes. Golden. Hmm? You get it at the beginning of Hein Kyo. I wouldn't. I, I must have unlocked it, but again, I don't have Kintoki, so I wouldn't know the difference between unlocking it at the beginning versus unlocking it at the end. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's Kintoki. Kintoki has only ever received a single buff in the history of his release, and it's been to his Noble Phantasm. Um. By any stretch of the imagination, if you looked at his kid, he would be considered bad. Uh, but somehow he is one of the most <laughs> damage-dealing berserkers in the entire game. Um, yeah, he, he always just deals a fuck ton of damage. In I don't know if it's just because of the team comps I see on JP or people in general just using him, but his my own understanding of him has always been... That he just deals so much crazy amounts of damage and that prevents him from getting any of his first skills like actually buffed because if they buffed him even though i think you could probably give him a gut somewhere it's a little bit crazy because again kentoki is really liked in japan he's like a fan favorite so it's actually kind of crazy like take a look at raiko who she fell off for just a little bit when arjuna altar came out and they gave that woman like four different kind of buffs <laughs> to try and get her back to where she was. Uh, can, if, can, if they ever felt the need that they thought people, Kintoki wasn't good or something, that they would have buffed him immediately to be on that level. But outside of his Noble Phantasm, I don't think they ever have. And I think it's probably because they're afraid that if they do buff him, uh, he'll end up destroying things. I don't know. But either way, he's a very strong unit. He is a very Gorilla Buster unit. If you love Gorilla Buster units, he's your dude. If you love Kentucky, then you should go for Kentucky. I wish I had Kentucky, to be honest. But unfortunately, he always sh his banners always show up at like the worst possible time. And this is the worst possible time. Because it is before the Ryoma banner and Gu the next Guda Guda. And it's before the mysterious Thanksgiving banner that's going to be coming up. So, yeah. Interesting times. But that is Kentucky. My understanding of him, as I've said before, he's golden, he's a golden man. Don't be off-put by the fact that his skills seem very basic. They are basic, um, but he just deals a lot of damage. Sometimes that's all you need for some units. <laughs> There's something to be said about just dealing a lot of damage to someone. Anyway, next, Abuki Doji. Uh, if you remember the last time I brought up Abuki, I thought that she was... Anyway, let's go into her unit. Uh, she is a saber. She's an AOE saber. She is also she is also gorilla. She has three buster, one quick, one arts. Her active skill is the physical strength of natural surroundings A+. Increases own attack for three times, three turns. Increases own MP gauge. 40% attack, 50% MP, and the cooldown of six. Second skill is the eight channels of sur surging waves B. Increases own buster performance for three turns. Increases own defense for three turns, and then grains crit stars. Um... The buster up is 30%, the defense up is 30%, and the stars are 20, and then the cooldown is 5. The third skill is the Defiled Fingertips A, which is a hell of a name 
for a skill. Seals one enemy's HNP for one turn, increases own critical damage for three turns, and then increase own damage against undead enemies for three turns. Uh, crit damage is 50%, and the undead damage is 50%, and the cooldown is 6. Uh, her passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Writing B, Dragon Kind E, X, and then the Snake Goddess Essence A. Her third skill is an Anti-Ruler Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is the... Oh god. The Shinkin Kusanagi no Tachi, the Sword of Gods, the Kusanagi no Tachi. A rank A plus Buster Noble Phantasm. That is anti-army slash anti-fortress. It hits four times. It ignores invincibility for one turn. That activates first. It deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to all enemies. Um, the damage is 300% at level 1, and if you get it all the way to MP5, it is 500%. But then the overcharge effect, it reduces oh, their buster resistance for three turns. The buster resistance down is 20% at level 1. And if you get her all the way to the final overcharge, it is a buster resistance of 40%. And then there is a costume for beating Hyankyo related to her, but because that is Hyankyo related, I will not show it. But for the most part, it's fine. Even if it takes you a while to get to Hyankyo, she still has some fantastic outfits in the second and third one. And I think her snake form is silly. It's a very silly little snake thing <laughs> that she is right here. Um, so, Buki Doji, how good is she? I remember when I talked about her previously when I was doing the month thing, I said that I thought that she was, that there were better AoE sabers, um, and then someone said to me, are you sure about that? And then I said, maybe I should double look at it, because I got a lot of pushback from people saying, like, I think you might be underrating her even though i was saying she was good i didn't think she was uh on the top top of some of the other ones comparatively and i have since then looked at some of the other ones and i think people were right that i was maybe uh overlooking her <laughs> but maybe i also thought i was getting her confused with bargus <laughs> because they are both uh big buster gigantic women who are Saber AoEs, so that's my bad. <laughs> I feel like my thoughts for Vargas ended up infecting my thoughts for Ibuki. Um, there's really no correlation between the two other than they are both gigantically huge buster uh, female women. Uh, anyway, Ibuki Doji herself, she is likely actually one of the top three in it for GoNA of Saber AoE units, with number one being... And apparently this is contentious, because when I said this last time, a lot of people were even fighting back and saying, like, I don't think it's actually them either. But if I were to give my personal, it would probably be Muramasa at number one, and then it would be Saber, and then it would be Ibuki. Now, originally I had it in my mind that Mo would be better than Ibuki, but then some people did point out to me that Ibuki is actually better in some challenge quest type stuff, and I never actually, and she's also better in Saber and challenge quest stuff as well. So I was like, I didn't actually think about that too much, to be honest, because <laughs> I never actually thought of using Ibuki in challenge quest, but you can actually use her. And just to be sure on a lot of things, I actually did use her in the most recent event to grind up and see how she would do, and she was doing amazing in that. And the reason is, is that even with... She does great, obviously, because she has the 50% MP charger right here. I'm dumb. Right here. So she can work with the basic comp, which is two Viches, her, and then boom, boom, boom. Everything works out perfectly, and you can do it that way. But if you're on a weird node where there's only a single boss or enemy type in the front of you, you don't even need to use her NP. She has three busters and she has an ability, she has a crit bomb related to her and so does Vich. As long as you have a single buster card, she can easily take down um, uh, a single enemy that she has type advantage over, like for example a Lancer or a Berserker. And that's what I was doing in the most recent event. Um, obviously that kind of changes depending on what kind of event you had, and I was also helped greatly by the fact that there was a 200% attack bonus damage up. But even without that, with just pure crit damage, I wouldn't have been able to do it, but she actually has a lot of crit, uh, based things in here, like 50% crit damage up right there, and then if they just so happen to be undead, you can also do that. Um, it ends up working out extremely well. So Buki Doji is a fantastic AoE saber, um... 
I have her. I've used her a lot more since then because after hearing people, because I had really just been using Saber for AoE grinding because she is very good at it <laughs> and she's fantastic at it. And I think that maybe, again, I still do think that I was probably thinking of Vargas was the one that wasn't as good as I wanted her to be. But at the same time, I might just be, I might have been blinded. It could have been really easily that, but yeah, I took a double look at it, and Ibuki Toshi is fantastic and is definitely worth summoning for. I've loved having her and using her the entire time that I've had her. The only thing that would possibly be a negative is that if you're super early on, I think the materials required to level her up might be a little bit too much out of your range. One moment, just very quickly. Oh god. Oh, okay. There we go. I was trying to avoid the second costume show. <laughs> There we go. Uh, actually, yeah, the only thing that's out of is the demonic flame. Other, other than that, everything's fine. And maybe the bones is a little bit too much, but eh, it's it's manageable. But anyway, Buki Doji, good ass unit, definitely in the top three for NA side. And uh, I thank everyone for very politely saying like, hmm, I think you might want to check that back, including my brother, who stopped me mid video to kind of talk to me about it, which is really funny. <laughs> He was, a. Uh, you, you guys were right on that one. But anyway, that is the download celebration. Now here's the question to ask, which is probably another big one. Should you actually be summoning on this? Or should you summon on this? Like I said, if you like Kintoki and you like Ibuki Doji, then these are two solid units and you're going to be fine with it. If you're someone who is specifically like, I am only looking for the toppest of top tier, there is technically <laughs> what if you what if you're someone who says i'm only looking for the toppest of top tier and i'm a big fan of abuki then my answer to you is to wait to summer because we're getting another abuki and summer abuki is insane crazy broken uh insane with it so if you can wait that long you can wait that long the only thing that i'm unsure of is thanksgiving is right around the corner and that really should after the previous banner that came out, which was Mysterious Heroine X and Spacious Star, which I tried to very, very generously say, well, I guess they are a part of the part two story. And that's to say that they have a single node <laughs> that has both of them in it. Uh, and they had like about a, a couple texts worth of dialogue put in there. I think that really should tell you that um, they are willing to bring back units very 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 unexpectedly and we are right around the time of the thanksgiving banner on na and i feel like i really do feel like there might be and i feel like enough people are starting to think the same way that they might be crazy enough to bring back oberon for thanksgiving if this was any other year where it's like that's too soon but literally they've been bringing back so many units within like a couple months of each other we literally had old lee and he was gone for maybe a month or two and then he came back so oberon is definitely a big big one it's probably big enough that i could see some of the jp devs saying like i don't think you can do that because i think the jp side would maybe get a little bit like how come the na side is able to get these units back faster than we can you kind of poke the bear there a little bit but uh, could it happen? Maybe. I definitely feel like in my bones, I feel like it could happen. So I'm very like anxious to say like, hey, spend on St. Quartz on anything, to be honest. You should be saving them for the betterment of Thanksgiving. But hey, if you've got some stuff to spare and you can spare maybe a multi or three, um, and you love Abuki, I would say go for her. She's definitely worth having, and I've loved having her and using her the entire time. And if you have, if you're a big fan of Kintoki, like I've said beforehand, I always wanted Kintoki, and I've never been able to get him because he's always on, he's always featured on banners, but he always comes at the worst time. And this is definitely a worst time <laughs> that I would consider. But anyway, those are my thoughts. I can wish you guys the best of luck if you do end up summoning. There won't be a summon video for me because both of me and my brother both have a Buki Doji and I'm missing Kentoki, but I'm saving whatever little stuff I have for Ryoma. I've, I've made my bed and I decided that my bed is with trying for Ryoma because I'm a big fan of Ryoma, so I want to try for him. 
And that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Tell me what your thoughts are for this. Are you ready to cozy up for winter? Um, if you want to give more Ibuki to- if you want to just continue to argue about AoE sabers, feel free. <laughs> maybe- maybe my words on Vargas will ignite the Vargas fans and they'll say like, actually, you got it wrong. But as a fellow Vargas fan, I definitely feel like she could be a little bit better. But that's not gonna stop me from summoning for her, either. So, duality of man. Until next time, everyone, you guys have a good day, have a good night, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.